I can see the headlights. Push and breathe. Push and breathe. We're almost there. Now's the hard part. Get it past the mirrors. Come on, babe, babe. Push, push. One big push. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, it's perfect, baby. Great job. Oh, it's beautiful. Baby blue. So nice. It's gorgeous. Hello, happy people, and welcome to your Moment of Zed, the YouTube channel dedicated to the most beautiful car in the world. The BMW Z3, or as the folks in Donegal call it, the Z3. I'm Mark, and today we're going to review a little bit of Z3 history. Last video we did geography, this video it's history. I hope you enjoy it, but first we have three Zeds of the Week. First up, we have Mike from Pennsylvania with a new to him 2000 M Roadster in a beautiful Dakar yellow with the S52 3.2 liter engine and 59,000 miles. Now Mike's put on new tires, wheel emblems, door handle gaskets, and new trunk lift supports. Next up are seat bushings and a driver's side seat belt guide. He also had an issue that left him stranded, a broken locking pin on the shifter bracket. He suggested I do a video about that. Mike, I appreciate the suggestion and I will look into it. Next up, we have Craig from Indiana. As far as I know, my first repeat Z of the Week owner. He has his second Z3, a 1999 coupe with a 2.8 liter engine and five speed transmission, 86,000 miles. Now he's the second owner. It was previously a California car. He's done paint corrections, had the wheels refurbished, brakes redone, all fluids changed. It's been ceramic coated. Got an angel eye headlights, clear marker lights, and a new clutch. He also has new rear tail lights with clear turn signals ordered. And he kept his Roadster, as you can see. Very nice, Craig. And last but not least, John from Delaware with his 2002 2.5 liter automatic Roadster with 64,000 miles. Now, this was a 50th birthday gift to John from his wife. He reciprocated with a 3 Series for her. Very nice. The only work he's done is a stereo and subwoofer upgrade. John, I love that interior and a very cool license plate. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for sharing your beautiful cars. If you'd like to see your car on Zed of the Week, please follow the easy instructions in the description below. Now on to our history lesson. Before jumping into the Z3, let's look at the cars that led up to it. In the late 1920s, BMW was a successful manufacturer of aircraft engines and motorcycles. It bought out Eisenach, one of Germany's oldest car manufacturers, and quickly improved on Eisenach's Dixie model, and prototypes entered rally competition. In 1930, the public version of this car was sold as the 315 DA3 Wartburg, BMW's first roadster. Here's a version of this car on display at the Zentrum in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Quickly, BMW designed their first car from scratch, the Roadster version of which would be the 315-1 and the 319-1, BMW's first use of the famous inline-six engines, in this case in 1.5 liter and 1.9 liter versions. Both proved to be formidable race cars, as well as popular with the public. BMW didn't rest on its laurels, and by 1936, BMW had created the 328 Roadster. It wowed the crowd and the competition at the Nürburgring with its 80 horsepower and 93 mile per hour top speed. The 328 not only featured a more powerful inline six, but more modern bodywork, which would help inspire the design of the Z3. World War II interrupted car production at BMW. As a supplier of aircraft engines to the Luftwaffe, BMW was heavily targeted by Allied bombing. Production capacity was completely lost, and BMW wouldn't resume car building again until 1951. And it wouldn't have a Roadster again for four more years. But what a Roadster it was. The 507 was the most beautiful BMW built, in my opinion, until the Z3. You can see its influence on the Z3's design and, of course, the later Z8. Unfortunately, this beautiful car had a tremendous sales price of almost $10,000 at that time, or about $110,000 in today's money. Only 254 were built. 
However, the 507 was popular with celebrities, most famously Elvis Presley, whose 507 would become a barn find years later, now restored and on display at the BMW Museum in Munich. Regardless, the low sales of the 507, combined with more stringent safety regulations, would end Roadster production at BMW for three decades. Fast forward to the early 80s, and BMW created a new subsidiary, BMW Technic, or ZT, in BMW's corporate code, headed by Dr. Ulrich Bez. Their mission was to develop innovative future vehicles outside of the normal series cars. Their first major project would be the Z1, the Z taken from the corporate code. The Z1 was the rebirth of the Roadster at BMW and was a quirky design with quirky features such as roll-up doors and plastic body panels. From 1989 to 1991, about 8,000 Z1s were built, mostly for European markets. While the Z1 was not a huge sales success, it showed there was still interest in the Roadster segment. Mazda proved this at the same time by introducing the MX-5 Miata, selling 140,000 of them in two years. With the success of the Miata, manufacturers raced to put out competitive Roadster models. BMWs would be the Z3. As a successor to the Z1, the Z3 began as an assignment to design a fun car. Joji Nagashima was a new designer at BMW at the time, with previous experience at Opel and Renault, as well as degrees in design from a university in Tokyo and Wayne State University in Detroit. His fun car design, with some 1930s 328 influence, would eventually beat out designs from BMW Technic, BMW Motorsport, and BMW Motorrad once BMW got serious about production. Nagashima was not a fan of the Z1 design and felt it was not traditional BMW. His design would harken back to the 328 and 507 Roadsters and leave the angularity of the Z1 behind. The second place design was the one from Motorrad, BMW's motorcycle division, and it had been built as a prototype. The engineer on that project was Dr. Burkhard Goschel, he would be chosen to head up the engineering side of the Z3 project, much to the delight of Nagashima, who got along well with him. Goschel, son of a Mercedes engineer, earned his degree at Stuttgart University and spent two years at Daimler before moving to BMW. Nagashima, Goschel, and interior designer Michael Ninnick wouldn't have the resources to push the envelope as the Z1 team had. For their now designated E36-7 Roadster, their instructions were to keep it cheap and make maximum use of available parts from the E36-3 series. The goal was a fun, entry-level car for around $25,000 US dollars. As such, the choice was made to use the 1.9-liter M44 four-cylinder engine instead of a six. The chassis would be based on the E36, but shortened by 10 inches. It kept the E36's front strut suspension, but in the rear, the old E30 semi-trailing arm axle was used due to space considerations. The Z3 in its initial incarnation was not a fast car. It had 22 more horsepower than the Miata, but carried 480 more pounds of weight. This resulted in similar 0 to 60 times in the low 9 second range. With the automatic, the Z3 clocked in at 9.7 seconds, 0 to 60, certainly not a fast time by today's standards. However, BMW did come close to its price goal at around $28,000. BMW quickly ramped up demand for the Z3 by placing it in the James Bond movie GoldenEye in November 1995, and advance orders poured in. The car officially debuted at the Detroit Auto Show in January 1996, fittingly, as the decision had already been made to build the Z3 at the new factory in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Building in the United States made sense, as the U.S. was one of BMW's most important markets, and it protected the price of cars from dollar to Deutschmark exchange rate fluctuations. A side effect of this decision was that BMW provided a place with the addition of the Zentrum Reception Hall on the factory grounds for enthusiasts to meet. 
Most prominent of these, the group that would become the ZSCCA or Z Series Car Club of America. This took the form of annual homecomings as hundreds of owners gathered to celebrate their cars. Not only loved by owners, the automotive press lauded the Z3 as well, with car and driver saying it was better than the popular Miata. The rest, as they say, is history. The Z3 ran for seven model years with almost a quarter million cars built, and many of them are still on the road today, now considered modern classics by many. So folks, there you have it. By the way, the main source I used for my information was Jackie Jurette's excellent book about BMW Roadster history. That link is in the description below. Please check out her book. She's a great author, great BMW author, former editor of Beamer magazine. And if you found my video entertaining and or informative, please crush that like button as always. And until next time, remember, friends don't let friends drive boring.